you know, looking back, like it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. So we don't reconcile our flesh and ourselves to God for salvation, for the ministry of reconciliation to be restored to the Father. We trust in the mediator, the man Christ Jesus. It's his work that we trust in. It's his righteousness. It's the obedience of one. It's the righteousness of one. Shall many be made righteous? But that is what restores us and reconciles us to God. It's faith in Jesus Christ because of what he did. You know, and just going back to the Old Testament, reading through Genesis, you know, where Abraham is offering his son Isaac as a sacrifice, which is a picture of Jesus Christ. And Abraham, as we know in Hebrews, was trusting by faith that God would raise Isaac up if he did sacrifice his son. But God stopped him and said, God will provide himself a lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. But you can also emphasize the word himself. God provided himself a lamb. He provided himself a lamb. God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. And then goes on in verse 19 to finish the passage to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in, God, in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So how are we made the righteousness of God? By repenting of our sins and trusting in our religious deeds, and good acts that we do? No. We receive righteousness by faith in Him. It's His righteousness. It's His perfect righteousness, unblemished without spot. That's what we trust in. But not only that, the local priesthood also made it mandatory where even the priests had to be without spot or blemish. And this was from a physical sense. This was also representative of how our works can't be given as a part of salvation and being acceptable to the Lord. That our repentance of sins can't be a part of the forgiveness of sins. You know, if God requires you to turn from your sins in order to be forgiven of your sins, then why did Jesus Christ have to die? You know, and there's a lot of religions that make fun of Christians who say that you have to repent of your sins for salvation. Islam, for instance. I saw an Islam website that says, if God already forgave you of your sins through the work of Jesus Christ, then why are you repenting of your sins for eternal life? You know, they get it in the sense that they understand that doesn't make any sense. They just don't get it in the sense that they acknowledge the truth and accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and acknowledged Him as the Son of God who died for them and overcame death for them. 